began to follow one uh, ministration and it was not just ministration it was a kind of a man of God being interviewed and I began to listen to him and I heard him while he was talking now there were some strange things I got from him which I began to ask myself who was the meaning of this so you know the scriptures makes us to understand that we shall know the false ones by their fruit take it very serious because you can see the scriptures gives, gives us the fruit of the spirit and also gives us the gift we have to know those things you can find someone operating under the gift but without the fruit you have to be careful when following such a person you should know where this person is coming from then uh, for you to know someone who is genuine someone who is of God you must see the fruit of the spirit gentleness meekness kindness long-suffering you see faith endurance so those fruit you must see them but once you begin to discover the absence of the fruit of the spirit in such a man or a woman of god's life calls for you to step back and you try to watch you try to mind your closeness with that person and it is at that time you need to use the word of god to be able to judge to know who is who who is this woman of god who is this man of god praise god one of the problems i i can say i have with some believers is because uh, is the problem of them not having knowledge on the word of god reading your bible doesn't mean you get to know all things but you have to give yourself into studying continuous studying of the word of god you might have read matthew 6 33 seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you and it has become like a song doesn't mean you have known or you have had a revelation on it what does it mean to seek the kingdom of god what is this righteousness you see so you you're supposed to study you're supposed to study to give yourself to the word of god so that it will have to be in you praise god so you have to give yourself to the word of god so that you can meet a, a situation like that and you apply the word praise god you apply the word so I was listening to this fellow then. I heard him saying like, if that is a kind of prophet who, who does not joke, if you try with him, he, he faces you, he cannot leave you. He will deal with you. Why they, they were interviewing him? That's all what I was getting from him was anger, anger. And if he could say, if anyone deals with him or plays with him is going to teach the person or face the person or challenge the person even if you're so full of the power of god you're not supposed to be like that we should talk like that when it has to do with demons we can be so radical when we are being attacked by a demon then we show the demon our other side in the lord that don't just see us to be humans. We are spirits. We have another side. And that's where angels intervene. Angels appear and they make the, 
the demons to know that this one you see is an authority just just look at elisha elisha he was just a quiet man he was just this kind of silent man but dangerous until even the the servant who was with him gehazi never knew how dangerous this man of god was was just following him and knowing that yeah he's a man of god god uses him but he never knew that in the realm of the spirit elisha was so dangerous until when elisha said oh god open his eyes that he might see then seeing the man of god on the mountain he did not see two of them he did not see him standing with the man of god on the mountain but he saw the man of god the man he was serving he saw the man of god on a chariot and round about him were 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 anxious soldiers of war and then was like what so when I began to listen to this man was expressing anger and I was like huh I sat quiet then I continue watching I said I should not just turn off the video it was on YouTube like that or Facebook and I heard him he went as far as swearing he swore I got it. I, I heard him swear. And he said, I swear. This, this. Ah. When I heard that, I said, this, 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 this. I just changed the channel. I just changed the channel. So, this, you know, you can be a prophet, but we can know you. We need the fruit of the Spirit. And you cannot hide. You cannot hide. The fruit of the spirit, it is the most difficult thing you will never find in the life of a false prophet. They will come to you, but they cannot observe the fruit of the spirit because they are nine. The Bible did not tell them the fruits, the nine fruits of the spirit, but says the fruit of calling it as a singular something which means the nine are all together if you practice eight and you lack one you have not fulfilled the fruit you are not complete therefore there's something there's a question in your life praise god there are other demons we call them the unclean spirits you can as well call them foul spirits foul spirits and i know you may ask yourself foul spirit what do i need to know about this foul spirit i want you to understand that these are demonic spirits living in people who haven't christ or jesus as their lord and savior People who have not made the prayer of salvation. People who have not accepted Jesus into their lives. People who Jesus is still standing at their door and knocking according to Revelation 3 verse 20. People who, who have not opened their hearts to receive him. To ask for the Bible says with the mouth confession is made unto salvation but with the heart one believes unto righteousness so these people who have not who have not opened their mouth to to confess and to to invite to call christ to come into them to accept him into their lives these people are having in them unclean demons unclean spirits one thing you must understand is there is no single soul on earth without a spirit. It is either you carry in you the spirit of God or in you demonic spirits. So unclean demons are demons or spirits which reside in the lives of those who are not of God. Unclean demons or foul spirits. Now, they are those spirits from the time you're born 
and you've not known Christ, especially when you're being born by parents who don't know God or parents who may say they are of God, but they don't practice righteousness. Who the devil still has power. So you have to come of age and you have to come and make the prayer of salvation. Then can you be free from such demons, from such spirits, unclean spirits. Some children carry the spirits from the time they are born. Some carry it even from their mother's womb. And that's why you see some children, they start growing up with wickedness. You find a little child, the child is so greedy. The child does not like to share. But you find some, they like to share. You find them with something small like that. You find them giving their friends. At times you even hear that this is my child like that. He will not, you find him like that, he will not eat. Even if you give him bread, he will share it all to his friends until he will even give the last. Yeah, these are examples of some of those children who are having the Spirit of God in them, even from their mother's wombs. If you, if you get to study the book of Zechariah, and you will see that John the Baptist was filled and was full of the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And we can also see another man of God, Samuel. The Bible makes us to understand. He, he, he was born and handed, that his mother conceived him, received him as a gift from God. And so she trained him in the way of the Lord until he presented him to the man of God early, the priest at the temple. And someone like Jeremiah, he was born a man of God until God said, from your mother's womb, before you were formed, or before I formed you, or before you were formed into your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you also to be a prophet. So the, this is just to make us understand that there are some who, I mean, are they, they, they carry in them the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God from their mother's womb. And so when they are born, the devil tries to touch them but cannot. Tries to touch them but cannot. Look like Jesus. Jesus was about to be killed when he was born. But because in him was the Spirit of God, so angels were special, they were on guard. And God himself will be speaking to the parents through the angels. Ah, take him this way. Ah, take him this way. Ah, take him this way. These people want to come against him. Why? Because in him was the spirit. So the devil never had access to him. Even Moses, you see, when he was being conceived, there was a prophecy that within that time, there was a man or there was a king, or there was a messiah which will be born. And so, the king passed an order for all newborn babies to be killed. But because the spirit of God was with Moses right from his mother's womb, so he could not die, he could not be killed. God had to give the mother understanding, wisdom, intelligence to take him and put in a basket which she waved, made it in such a way that water would not penetrate and put in Moses there and put him where the prince, the princess will see him. And that is how, so you see God like that. I mean, those who have in them the spirit of God from womb, from the womb, they are protected. And there are these others who, I mean, may not have the spirit of God from their mother's womb, but when they grow, they confess Christ and the devil, this unclean spirit, leaves them and the spirit of God comes in. Praise God. So, the unclean spirit is a spirit which is found or these are spirits found in the lives of all those who are not of God. And the very first spirit 
the very first demonic spirit you will ever find in a person's life, in a person who is not of God, who is not a pursuer of Christ, is the foul spirit or the unclean spirit. That's the spirit you will find. Praise God. Now, listen to something about this unclean spirit. The scriptures according to Luke gospel. Luke chapter 11 from verse 24. It tells us that Luke 11 from verse 24 up to 26. It tells us that when an unclean spirit leaves a man. In other words, when someone who is possessed, who is possessed by that unclean spirit or who is carrying that unclean spirit is being delivered the spirit leaves and goes through dry places looking for where to 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 stay to enter and for not finding he says i will go back to my house where i'm coming from so it calls it my house because it has been there for long so they 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 live in human flesh I minister I, I minister there's a message you can check on YouTube the the fletchly house there with the fletchly house you get all this revelation of how the the body the flesh not just the human even animals as far as you are a a creature with flesh spirits have you as their dwelling and it is either your body is a dwelling for demons or a dwelling for the spirit of God praise God so you can check that in in my in in one of my videos just type it the fletchly the fletchly house by N. N. Daniel you're going to find it praise God so this unclean spirits they live in people unclean spirit they are called foul spirit foul spirits foul spirits now we also have uh, some other demons called the demons of perfection the demons of perfection now this I call them the demons of perfection because they they you know the word seven stands for perfection right or completion so when this demon of the, the, the one thing you have to understand with this demon of perfection is that they work in a group of seven they work in a group of seven they don't go one person with the unclean spirit an unclean spirit can live in you alone from the time you're born and as you're growing you're growing you are more, you might be morally good yes but the spirit is there until you confess Christ then can the spirit lives and the spirit of Christ comes into you so this 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 demons of perfection they are those demons which if you read uh let me read to us Luke Luke gospel chapter 11 verse 26 says um, verse 26 says then go at he okay let me just read from verse 24 it says when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out 25 and when he cometh and find it it swept and garnished 26 says then go at he and take it to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first now it makes us to understand that when an unclean spirit goes out of a man it starts first with unclean spirit when the person becomes delivered he becomes free and as you continue to walk with God, the Spirit of God stays in you. But if you're delivered and you go back and you continue doing the same evil things, then 
the spirit after lottery going to and fro looking for where to rest and finding it not it says i will go back to my house where i'm coming from and when it comes and finds that ah oh, the house has been swept swept and prepared or garnished then it says oh i will go the, the scripture says it does not enter it goes back and invites seven it's the scripture specifies this jesus himself teaching he says the spirit goes and invites seven other more wicked demons than himself and they come and they enter the man such that the situation the last situation becomes worse and this is a state where you find that uh somebody you used to be this kind of person that you just pick you just like to see you just you may just enter somewhere and you see somebody's uh something nice and you just take it and you pocket it and you go and the person will even look for it and you will not tell the person that you are the one who took it that's how it starts the unclean spirit now when you are being delivered the spirit does what the spirit leaves and when after your deliverance you go to the house again and maybe you came you saw your neighbor keeping maybe two thousand dollars maybe keeping one dollars on the table and you just picked it and you pocketed it and you you, you left or you are in the house with somebody the person keeps his or her thing and you pick it without informing even when the person is saying where is this my thing you pretend as if you don't know so when that unclean spirit which was cast out of you or out of such a person goes and when it comes back and sees that the person has gone back to the same things then the spirit now does what it goes and invites seven now other demons and they come and now eight of them they stay in you eight of the spirits they stay in that body and the situation becomes worse now from picking in the house to picking now from neighbors picking from public places in fact you start stealing more than ever before not just taking now but stealing your situation becomes worse until you at times look at yourself and you are like but i was not like this i don't know what is happening to me i don't just know i just used to sit like this and i just feel like i just lost i just feel like i should have sex with a man i just feel like i should have i need to sex i just feel like this this these things they come you start it at once when this unclean spirit is there and once you're delivered and you go back that's when it becomes worse and some women they used to sleep with one man and when they they are delivered and they say no i have received christ until marriage and after the deliverance you want to see the next week or the next month they start going back with that same man now it gets worse now that the seven spirits now they come and it gets to a stage where she can now get even five guys living from this one to this one living from this one to this one getting money here getting money there getting money that way so this is what happens on clean spirits so when the unclean spirits invite the seven your situation becomes worse then there's this other uh demon which is not just uh there's this other demon we call them sweepers or ministration spirits they are those spirits which minister to the person like you're being delivered yes but they are there those spirits they are always around close to you the unclean spirit has gone yes so the the ministration spirits they are now when you sit that's why you have to avoid being idle after deliverance 
a man of God, please, when you deliver somebody, try to make sure you follow this person up. Try to make sure you try to, to, to engage this person. The person should have maybe a handwork to do, which is very important not to be idle. Because by the time the person is idle, very soon you see that all oh, the spirit starts ministering. And this is what happens even to, to, to women. The spirit starts ministering. Uh, choice, don't you see? Now you don't, you don't, you know, that guy used to give you money. He used to sustain you. But now, what will you do? Don't you think you should date just him? And I'm sure he will marry you. This, this, and you, you go back. You see? So, these are spirits. They minister to you ministration spirits or demons. I call them sweepers. So by the time they start ministering to you and ministering, once you start listening to them, the word of God which has come into you, that deliverance you have received becomes of no effect again. The word of God leaves you, leaves you. And as the word of God leaves you, that's when now, when the unclean spirit comes to check and sees that the room has been garnished and swept, who swept the house? Ministration spirit. They have caused the word of God which was stained in you, which had come in you, the spirit of God, which was now in you to leave you because you went back. So the sweepers, they have ministered to you and you have hearkened to them and you have gone back to your former sin and so the unclean spirit goes and invite the seven other demons and they come into you so we have sweepers or we call them ministration spirits and don't forget these are demons praise god so in the part three i'll be talking on other demonic creatures and I believe you're going to be blessed and just follow me. I'm teaching us these things not for us just to know, but for us as ministers of God, men and women of God, children of God, to be aware of these things. Praise God. It is nice coming to us. Just we meet again in part three. God bless you. Shalom.